전 전현! 국기에 대하여 그래! 바로! 우리는 여기서 무엇을 하는 것이 아주 특별하고 아주 특별하고 something that is rarely seen in probably your own lifetime. The making of a master. You see before you four gentlemen who will be testing for their fourth degree black belts and two who will be testing for their third degree. Before the testing begins, we would like to introduce some special examiners. Believe me, folks, these people are heavyweights in the world of Taekwondo. Grandmaster Kwang Woon Kim. Grandmaster Kim is the 12th ninth degree black belt in the world. Our next special examiner Grandmaster Kim, he is a professional Taekwondo master from Korea. Grandmaster Myung Mays, she is the highest ranked woman in the world. Master Nam Goong, Master Goong graduated from Korean military school that's similar to West Point. Our next examiner, Master K.S. Lee. Next, we have Master Chang from Atlanta, Georgia. Our next special examiner, Master Byung Lee, who is Master Lee's younger brother from Greenville. Another brother of Master Lee's, Master Song Ho Lee. And we have one other guest, Mr. William Sanderson from Hollywood, California. And now it is my extreme pleasure to introduce the master who is about to make some masters, someone that many of you greatly admire and love. I will keep it short, Master June Lee. Thank you, Mitchell. I'd like to welcome all of you and plus today's distinguished guest masters and grandmasters throughout America. And this is a very special day for me. Since I started teaching Taekwondo here in America, it's the first time I'm able to create fourth degree assistant master level taekwondo instructors under my teaching system. So I'm very privileged. I'm very honored to have them here today. And all of you, please cheer for them. I'd like to create today's very much cheering atmosphere. Everybody, let's give them a big hand, please. Thank you. I love them very much, and they love their students very much also. So you all have a loving relationship. Right before the Black Belt promotion exam, one of my younger brother, Sang Ho Lee from Burlington, will have a small Taekwondo demonstrations for our event today. And thank you very much, and have a good time. Thank you.
Go back, prepare. Second degree black belt will be trying for third on today. Jung Ho Lee and James Gary. Ancient to the hood. Bow to his eminence. Thank you, sir. Should be it. Ten steps number one on your own count. Steps number two, hands on your hip. Same thing on your own. Three, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you, sir. Attention to the On your own count. Ready? Come to the middle. <coughs> they need to go through everything from the beginner's level to up to their current rank rep level right now. Today, today, take it easy.
고장 그래 태극 육장 어디 선장 Hello. Hello. Black belt looks very good. Look like you're always supporting. Throw the ring here. This is something what we want to see. Take the ring. Re. Sit down. They will have almost no time to rest until the exam is over. So everybody, when you see they are exhausted, please motivate them from time to time. Thank you, sir. Hey, come here. Come here. Take a picture. That was the old colder, uh, the up to high red belt taekwondo pumses. Now they are going to perform black belt pumses. Pumse Korea, to be. On your own count. Sit down.
Kamsa Kumugan Sajak Sure, thank you, sir. That was the last Taekwondo Pumse they are going to do today. Chariot <laughs> Kune! I was nine years old when I first started. I started not because I was looking for benefits such as self-control, self-confidence, etc. But because I was fascinated by all the action scenes and movies that I had seen. My brother Byung started teaching me along with my friends at a little, little village that I grew up in. It was fun then, but I was easily bored and never had enough patience to become any good. When I first entered the dojang a couple of years later, I was all excited. But after days of cleaning bathrooms, being chastised by instructors, plus demanding workout, I started hating it. I realized that martial arts just wasn't for me. I was a kid. I just wanted to learn fancy techniques and be like a movie star. Later did I understand that a great deal of practice and swear was necessary to gain such a techniques and power. I skipped going to many classes. I would leave home telling my family that I was going to Dojang, but instead I spent my two hours at a video arcade. I wasn't stupid enough to go and get beat up every day at the Dojang and cry on the way home. I didn't know anything back then. I went to Dojang because I was expected to do so. After all, all my brothers were into it, so why should not be? I carried a great big burden on my shoulder and went to classes. I didn't realize that martial arts could offer me something more than kicks and punches. I just saw what was ahead of me, nothing beyond it. I was a caterpillar who never knew that another life existed. Something completely different, something more beautiful. A life of a butterfly. 
As if a caterpillar doesn't know that it'll one day become a butterfly, I didn't know that martial arts was going to offer me another life. I was a blind caterpillar when I first started. I didn't know where I, where I was going. My eyes just started to open, and not like any other caterpillar, I now know that there exists another life. That is if I had survived through this one. I now had hope, not that I didn't have any before, but I now had more. Martial art training made me feel this way. It told me that if I, if I train hard and do my best, I'll one day become a butterfly. I trained not to become, a best, become the best in the world. Or well, that would be nice too, but I just want to be the best that I can be. It doesn't matter to me whether someone can do a triple flying sidekick and I can't, or break more boards than I. I'm satisfied with my self-improvement, that I can now do things that I wasn't able to do before I started taking Taekwondo. I remember when I was a white belt, my instructor had me do her decline sit-ups with my legs on top of a chair. I tried, I tried hard, but I could not do a single one. Next now I can do 10, 50, 100, 200 on. My point is I have improved a thousand percent, and now I owe it all to Taekwondo. When I train, I do not compete with any others but myself. I learned that there is no reason for me to compare myself to any others because I am me and they are them. As long as I try hard and do my best, and I know, I know I'm going to be fine. My ultimate goal is to become a butterfly. I know it sounds a little corny and it will take time, but I also know that I'll get there someday. Knowing myself, I'll probably have a couple of ups and downs, maybe more downs than ups. But you got to have a couple of downs in order to have ups, right? I also know that my friends at Taekwondo School support me throughout my training, so I shouldn't have any problem. I thank you all for coming out here to support me. I also thank you for coming out to watch me struggle. Thank you all. One steps of defense. I was born and raised in a small town in northern Wisconsin. I'm the third oldest in a family of 13 children. I hold a bachelor's degree in physics. I started my Taekwondo career with Master Jun Che in Columbus, Ohio. About four years of training with Master Che, I tested for my first degree black belt and received it. Shortly thereafter, I re relocated to Coral Springs, Florida. Upon arriving in Florida, I joined the Taekwondo, Taekwondo school run by Master J. Yang. Master Yang's school followed the World Taekwondo Federation requirements for Taekwondo ranking. I was required to learn an entirely new set of Pumseis, namely the eight Taegup Pumseis and Kareel. After about a year of training under Master Yang, I retested for my first degree and uh, received it from the World Taekwondo Federation. I received my second degree black belt under the Federation about 18 months later. About three years after living in Florida, I decided to move. 
I had some friend, friends working at Alcatel here in Raleigh, and through them found out there was a position available for which I was qualified. I interviewed for the job and was hired. The same day I had the interview with Alcatel, I visited the Taekwondo schools in the area, one of which was Julie's Taekwondo Academy. I talked with Master Lee and told him of my experience, and he informed me of what the school had to offer. I was very impressed with Master Lee and the fact that he did not pressure me into joining that day. He was so confident in the quality of our school that he encouraged me to check into the other schools in the area. Upon returning to Raleigh, I, I visited Master Lee again and joined the school that very day. I remember that day well. It was a Saturday. I was only going to sign up for it and sign up for school on that day and start the following Monday. The Sabadim asked me if I had my dome off with me. I told him that I did, and he said that there was a class going to start in a few minutes and encouraged me to start that day. Well, I did. That day was the day I met, met, met Barry Partridge for the first time. Meeting Barry with that big smile on his face really made me feel relaxed to that home in the dome job. Of course, I thought, thought the same thing many others have, about, have expressed about him. How could anybody that big move so fast? Of course, he's not that big anymore. <laughs> After about two weeks of classes, I became acquainted with most of the regular students and instructors. I was quickly accepted into the family at Jun Lee's Taekwondo Academy. Since I did not know all of the one-step self-defense techniques and several other requirements, Master Lee asked that I wear a white belt with a black tip. With the help of Barry Partridge, George Bell, Joe Ho Lee, and Son Ho Lee, and many others, I was able to learn those requirements quickly. After about two months, I demonstrated these requirements during a regular black belt exam, and Sonnenim granted me the second degree black belt recognition within Jun Lee's Taekwondo Academy. When I was growing up, I participa participated in many team sports. I was never very good, so I did not get a chance to play very much. One reason I started Taekwondo was that I thought it was a, more of an individual type of activity, and therefore I would not be required to make the team or be good to start with. In Taekwondo, your biggest competitor is yourself. You must try to be the best that you can be. Just remember, there, are all, there is always someone better or worse than yourself. I think Taekwondo is both, both an individual and a team sport, the team being your Taekwondo family. Your fellow students your, and your instructors are your teammates. They are always there to help, encourage, and support you. I first started Taekwondo to learn self-defense, to keep in shape, and to gain self-confidence. I think I have achieved that, uh, excuse me, I think I've achieved what I have initially set, set out to achieve, plus a lot more. Taekwondo has become a way of life for me. once again against knife. Partner will be Richard Gordon. My desire is to help other students to gain from Taekwondo all the things that I have gained. I enjoy watching the children's faces for when they break their first board, perform, perform their first punse, or recite the ten articles without any help. Many people think Taekwondo is learning to fight. It is true that you learn how to kick and punch, but this is only for self-defense or organized competition. To me, learning Taekwondo means learning how not to fight. It means learning to use your mind to avoid confrontation and to control situations. Before taking Taekwondo, I would not have been able to stand up here and read this essay. 
It is still not easy for me. Thank you, Mr. Gary. But at least I'll be able to try. I think they performed the world today. <laughs> and would you like to grant to them as a third degree blackbird? Distinguished panel here, and the masters and grandmasters, they all observed, and they will, and we will let you know in one hour. Thank you, Junior. 
Now, we are about to create a Taekwondo master. Instructor Douglas Lawrence, Instructor George Aaron Bell, Instructor Barry Partridge, Instructor Clarence Franklin. White belt basic. Ten steps number one. Sidya! One, two, three, Aya! Aya! Six, seven, Aya! Ha! Ten, thank you, sir. Ten steps number two. Yellow belt, Pubsa. Sidak! High yellow belt to Pumse. Thank you,
태국 육장 준비! 시작! 태극 출전! 출전! 태극 8장 하이 레드벨트 품새 품새 고려 준비! 원영원 카운트 품새 금강 시작 Sure. 
금세 태백 진야 평원 준비 품새 평원 주야 Thanks, sir. Turn! Turn me! Next, Taekwondo Black Belt Pumse. Pumse, ship in! Mr. Douglas Lawrence from Durham School, Mr. Barry Partridge from our Nightdale School, just relocated from Zebulon to Nightdale, and Mr. George Bell from the Headquarters School, and Mr. Clarence Franklin from Rocky Mountain School. They are all testing for the four stand black belt today. This is the last Pumse. Pumse Chitte. Chitte. One step soft defense performing. Very Padre, Clarence Franklin. 
Master Lee helped me to understand that Taekwondo was not just a physical martial art, but a mental martial art as well. He taught me that there were more to Taekwondo than just kicking and punching. That is about uh, learning uh, about the nature, others and yourself. I began to realize that I had to keep a positive attitude and that in order to be loving towards others, I had to humble myself. In the future, I plan to dedicate myself more to learning and teaching Taekwondo, as well as promoting it as a sport and a way of life. And if I don't live another day, I can truly say I have had the chance of a lifetime. <clears throat> I would like to thank everyone for your support. Master Lee for everything he has done. He has opened a lot of doors for myself and others. He has been a great instructor and a wonderful friend. I want to thank Sabonim, Mr. Crump, for accepting me as a Royal Tigers. Sometimes, some, <clears throat> excuse me. I would like to thank Sabonim, Mr. Crump, for accepting me as a Royal Tiger and giving me something to look forward to when I was a boy. Mr. Crump and the Royal Tiger would always be a part of me. I want to thank uh, all the instructors for their love and understandings. <clears throat> I will ask for a better group of people. I, one couldn't ask for a better group of people. Also, I'd like to thank Lane, my sister, for supporting me. When I was a boy, just starting out, she was always more than willing. She was always more than willing to give up her hard-earned money to send me to the Taekwondo competition. And she would always give me recognition when I won and encourage me to continue when I lost. I would like to thank my wife, Tracy, for her understanding and not giving up on me when I was about to give up on myself. She, and for motivating me by saying, you can do it, you will do it. I would like to thank my mother, who I have the utmost respect for. She raised 10 children on her own and all are positive role models in our community today. I would like to thank her for her prayers and, and dedication, uh, ded dedicating her, uh, demonstrating her faith, demonstrating her strong faith and prayers that kept me strong and protect me from harm over the years. <clears throat> and most of all, I'd like to thank God for giving me a strong mind and strong body Without God, these days could not be possible. One cannot ask for a better family. Thank you guys very much. My name is Clarence Eugene Franklin, Jr. <clears throat> First, I would like to thank God for my life, health, and strength. As a boy, my life began in Melbourne, Florida. I was born on August 30th, 1958. I'm one of five children in my family. <clears throat> my mother and father had three girls and two boys during their marriage. At the time, I'm the only man of the family still living. My father passed away when I was 12. And my brother passed three years ago. My mother and sister, whom I love so very much, are doing fine at this time. We are a very close family. We constantly keep in contact with each other. Today, they, they could not, today, they all know that I'm testing for fourth degree black belt. Physically, they could not be here to, to watch me perform, but mentally, they are here with me. My family has always supported me in my martial art career. <coughs> At the age of 17, I started taking Taekwondo in Albany, Georgia, under Master Young Seal So. My reason for taking Taekwondo was that I wanted to become a better fighter so that I could survive and take care of myself on the city streets. Little did I know, Taekwondo was not just learning how to fight. But who could blame me for thinking so? At the age of 17, the only martial art I was aware of and believed in is what I had seen at the movies. As time went on after joining the Taekwondo school, the more I learned about Taekwondo, the less I wanted to fight. I began to understand that Taekwondo was a way of life, and it teaches you how to combine your mind and body as one. I have been taking Taekwondo for 17 years, so excuse me, for 16 years. <coughs> in, in those 16 years, I have met and trained with a lot of nice people. 
Everyone has, everyone has a special person in whoever, in whatever they are involved in. My special person in Taekwondo happens to be my best friend, Mr. Barry Partridge. I met Mr. Partridge in 1987 at Junior Lee's Taekwondo Academy in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Mr. Partridge and I have been friends from the first day we met. I love him. He's like a brother to me. At this time, I would like to thank Master Lee for everything he has done for me. Everyone at the Taekwondo, and everyone at the Taekwondo School. <coughs> We all know that you are a master in Taekwondo, but to me, you're also a master in our family relationship here at Junlee's Taekwondo Academy. We are proud to have you as our leader. Hopefully, everything I have received from you, I will be able to pass it on to help someone in life as it has helped me. Thank you. Let's for a second. Last one. To me! Mr. Franklin, begin. Next, Douglas Lawrence and George Bell. Time, time, and time again is the question. The common definition of time is a point or period when something occurs, known as a second, minute, hour, day, week, and year. On the other hand, I believe time can be best described in a quote by Alan Watts, which states, I have realized that the past and the future are real illusions, that they exist only in the present, which is what there is and all that there is. Remember the main concept of time I want to express today is we move within time. Time does not move within us. How does this relate to my Taekwondo life? Well, let me explain. In July of 1975 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I started practicing Taekwondo as a hobby. With a lot of difficult times and hard practice, five and a half years of practice elapsed and I earned my first degree black belt. By this time, I first realized that Taekwondo wasn't just kicking and punching, but something more. I just didn't know what it was yet. In 1984, I received my second degree black belt. This is when I started to understand what was missing, but I still didn't know how to obtain what I was looking for. At least I thought I didn't. By that time, I reached a stage when I would read everything I could get my hands on pertaining to Taekwondo and martial arts. By doing this, I started to expand my knowledge and understand how important combining one's mind and body to Taekwondo really was. In May of 1987, I tested for my third degree black belt. At this point in my life, I thought I understood Taekwondo, but I didn't. During my 12 years of experience up to 1987, I was searching for something that was already there. 
but I just didn't realize what it was until March of 1987, 1988, when I became part of Jun Lee's Taekwondo family. That something was time. Like I said before, time is always a present. Master Lee gave me an additional sense of direction, guidance, and time that I needed. All the knowledge of my other instructors and Master Lee that, that they have given me is with me today. And with that in mind, I plan to give the same knowledge to my students. From August 1987 to May 1991, I earned my bachelor degree in music education, sorry, in music performance, and a minor in philosophy and religion, which is just not a degree in music, but an education in the fine arts. This education relates to Taekwondo in so many ways that I can't express all of it presently. But I can say but between my college education and my Taekwondo education, I've grown and matured within the past 16 and a half years. With that in mind, I plan to continue to grow and stress the education of harmonization of one's mind and body. With such a harmony of both mind and body, time will always stay present. But we, but we will move within time and grow to a point of spiritual enlightenment within ourselves. In my 23 years of life and 16 and a half years of Taekwondo experience, I've learned much and with God's will, I plan to experience many more years of education and Taekwondo education, which are one and the same. Remember, we are in the present. We cannot know what tomorrow will bring forth. We know only what the truth is for us today. That is what we are called upon to serve and what we serve in all lucidity. To conclude, I want to first thank, uh, first of all, thank God Almighty, and secondly, my mother, which she's home right now, sick, and my family, who I love dearly for their support and patience with me during the past 23 years of my life. And last but not least, Master June Lee, because without him, I would not have had the opportunity to be here today. Thank you very much, Master Lee. And of course, the students of June Lee's Taekwondo, my friends, and my fraternity brothers for their encouragement that brought me to this point and time of life today. Thank you very much. Mr. Bell, take first. Go. As an 11-year-old during the fall of 1966, I used to look forward to Friday nights. There was a TV show called The Green Hornet that featured an actor named Bruce Lee. I was amazed at how well this man could defend himself with his hands and feet. That was my first exposure to a martial art, and I knew then it was something I wanted to learn. Seven years later, in September of 1973, I took my first lesson in Taekwondo. At that time, I didn't really know what it was all about. I just knew I wanted to learn to defend myself like Bruce Lee did in the movies and on TV. When I started Taekwondo training, the highest ranking students in our class were green belts. I used to look at them and think that when I get green belt, I'll be that good and I can quit. I didn't realize you have to continue training if you want to maintain your skills. A year later, I reached my goal of green belt and I realized there was much more to learn. It would take many years to learn it. At that time, I decided I would be involved in Taekwondo for the rest of my life and I never looked back. As a student, I always enjoyed Taekwondo class, even though it was very demanding physically. I knew the training was good for me and would make me a better person physically and mentally. While at the Green Belt level, my instructor started letting me help teach the lower ranking students. This teaching responsibility made me look at Taekwondo from a totally different perspective. As much as I enjoyed taking class, I also enjoyed teaching just as much. It gave me a sense of pleasure to help other people learn and accomplish their goals in Taekwondo. It got to the point where I would work out on my own during the day, so that when I went to class at night, I could concentrate on helping my instructor teach. In November of 1975, I earned my first degree black belt. I knew then I wanted to make a career of teaching Taekwondo. Nine years later, in March of 1984, I opened my first school. I remember teaching my first class with only one student and thinking to myself, it's not a very big class, but it is my class, and I am responsible for what this person learns. Over the years, I have come to appreciate the tremendous responsibility of being a Taekwondo instructor. And I'm speaking of the responsibility to one's students. When a person joins your class, he or she entrusts a certain part of their life to you. You could have some effect on that person's physical and mental well-being. As a Taekwondo instructor, you take your students not only into your school, but also into your heart. Your love for them is like the love of your children. Excuse me. You 
You share their success and their happiness as well as their disappointments and sorrows. You miss them when they stay out of class for a week. You're concerned for them if they get an injury or come down with an illness. You can become overcome with panic and concern if you turn on the television one morning and you hear a news report that a police officer was shot and you have officers in your class. Thank you very much. Self-defense against knife. Or if you hear a report that two teenagers lost their lives in a car accident coming from a high school graduation party and you have two students who just graduated the night before. I promised myself I wasn't going to do this. Life certainly has its ups and downs, so we must learn to take the bad with the good and the bitter with the sweet. But the positives of being a Taekwondo instructor far outweigh the negatives. It's a wonderful feeling when you, when you watch the months and the years pass and you can see growth and development in your students, people whose lives you actually touch. When a six-year-old has had such a hard time learning the first 10 steps to take up ill John, then he finally goes through all 18 steps without making a mistake. I feel as much of a sense of accomplishment as he does. Or when a student has been unsuccessful at his breaking technique in practice and is successful on test day, it makes me very happy to see that person overcome that obstacle. Sometimes the rewards can be something as simple as seeing a person who started class so shy that he never smiled, smiled or spoke to anyone, talking and laughing with his classmates. My desire as a take one instructor is that every one of my students benefit and learn from my teaching. Periodically I evaluate my life and I ask myself if I'm happy with what I'm doing. The answer is always yes. Very few people really love their work, but I do. And it's the people contact and relationships form that I love the most. I often tell people, if I woke up tomorrow with $10 million, I would still teach the Taekwondo, but I'd probably take a lot of Fridays and Saturdays off. <laughs> Thank you. Then after this Ho Shin Sol, you're going to be doing your Kerugi sparring. So prepare. Mr. Patridge first. Assistant will be Michael and Sharat from Raleigh School. Douglas Lawrence from our third school. Assistant is Brian, second degree black belt.
For some of us, black is the color of night, emptiness, or even death. But night is the birthplace of dreams, emptiness, a temporary vacuum that nature will soon fill, and death, a transition to a greater state. To those who have earned a higher degree black belt, these principles hold a special meaning. The fruition of dreams, cherished through years of discipline, the replacement of doubts and insecurities with patient perseverance. The gradual transformation from a student taking instruction to an instructor sharing knowledge. For those who have tested here today, another journey is just beginning. Its path is one of growth and illumination, as symbolized by the lighting of candles. In its highest form, Taekwondo is an art, not only martial, but spiritual. It is of inner light, exemplified in the qualities of sacrifice, humility, and services, which will be carried away from this ceremony. A flame that will continue to glow long after the last candle is extinguished. Master Lee uh, is a true Sabu Nim. Sabu Nim meaning teacher of everything. And he is the exemplification of that word. And I really mean that very much. And I think with that in mind, uh, I want to live up to the standards of a Sabu Nim and be able to teach my students in the same respect. I've been doing Taekwondo Nim for 15 years. And um, out of all the Taekwondo schools that I've ever seen and ever been to, He's, he's, he runs one of the, uh, the best Taekwondo uh, schools I've ever in my life uh, seen so far. He's also a very loving and caring person, and uh, which also his loving and caring, I learned a lot from him, and uh, which helped me to be more loving and caring towards other people. Breaking blocks and everything is not much of a physical. I've seen people, black belts that are over 300 pounds, over six feet tall, still couldn't break a one concrete block. I've seen kids who are 12 years old, 70 pounds, still breaking. It's a matter of your mind over the body.